It's classic book talk time. Marilla came briskly forward as Matthew opened the door, but when her eyes fell on the odd little figure in the stiff, ugly dress with the long braids of red hair and eager, luminous eyes, she stopped short in amazement. Matthew Cuthbert, who's that? She ejaculated. Where is the boy? There wasn't any boy, said Matthew wretchedly. There was only her. He nodded at the child, remembering that he had never even asked her name. No boy? But there must have been a boy, insisted Marilla. We sent word to Mrs. Spencer to bring a boy. Well, she did it. She brought her. I asked the station master, and I had to bring her home. She couldn't be left there, no matter where the mistake could come in. Well, this is a pretty piece of business, ejaculated Marilla. During this dialogue, the child had remained silent, her eyes roving from one to the other, all the animation fading out of her face. Suddenly, she seemed to grasp the full meaning of what had been said. Dropping her precious carpet bag, she sprang forward a step and clasped her hands. You don't want me? She cried. You don't want me because I'm not a boy? I might have expected it. Nobody ever did want me. I might have known it was all too beautiful to last. I might have known nobody really did want me. Oh, what shall I do? I'm going to burst into tears. Burst into tears she did, sitting down on a chair by the table, flinging her arms upon it and burying her face into them. She proceeded to cry stormily. Marilla and Matthew looked at each other deprecatingly across the stove. Neither of them knew what to say or do. Finally, Marilla stepped lamely into the breach. Well, well, there's no need to cry about it. Yes, there is need. The child raised her head quickly, revealing a tear-stained face and trembling lips. You would cry too if you were an orphan and had to come to a place you thought was going to be home and found out that they didn't want you because you weren't a boy. Well, this is the most tragical thing that ever happened to me. Something like a reluctant smile, rather rustily from long disuse, mellowed Marilla's grim expression. Well, don't cry any more. We're not going to turn you out of doors tonight. You'll have to stay here until we investigate this affair. What's your name? The child hesitated for a moment. Will you please call me Cordelia? She said eagerly. Call you Cordelia? Is that your name? No, it's not exactly my name, but I would love to be called Cordelia. It's such a perfectly elegant name. I don't know what on earth you mean. If Cordelia isn't your name, what is? Anne Shirley reluctantly faltered forth the owner of that name. But, oh, please do call me Cordelia. It can't matter much to you what you call me if I'm only going to be here a little while, can it? And Anne is such an unromantic name. Unromantic fiddlesticks, said the unsympathetic Marilla. Anne is a real good, plain, simple name. You've no need to be ashamed of it. Oh, I'm not ashamed of it, explained Anne. Only I like Cordelia better. I've always imagined that my name was Cordelia. At least I always have of late years. When I was young, I used to imagine it was Geraldine. But I like Cordelia you better now. But if you call me Anne, please call me Anne spelled with an E. What difference does it make how it's spelled? Asked Marilla with another rusty smile as she picked up the teapot. Oh, it makes such a difference. It looks so much nicer. When you hear a name pronounced, can't you always see it in your mind just as if it was printed out? I can. And A-N-N looks dreadful, but A-N-N-E looks so much more distinguished. If you'll only call me Anne spelled with an E, I shall try to reconcile myself to not being called Cordelia. And that is a selection from Anna Green Gables by Ella Montgomery. It was written back in 1908. Anna Green Gables is a story that mostly revolves around an orphan named Anne, with an E. <laughs> uh, she's a dreamer and it kind of follows her growing up. Basically, she survived the years that she was an orphan by creating like fanciful uh, stories and games and imagery in her mind. And basically it kind of has changed who she is a bit compared to other essentially teenagers. She pretty quickly becomes a teenager. She starts out at 11 years old, but anyway, so she's, you kind of follow her growing up, being introduced to school, being introduced to the idea of family. She has friends, like develops friendships that she really didn't have the opportunity to when she was in the orphanage. There's a lot about self-worth and self-image and like how she sees herself. She's pretty hard on herself. And there's a lot of lessons that she learns along the way about her own self-worth and that she's worth being loved, worth being cared about, protected. It's often people's favorite classic. It's not really a contemporary classic because it was written back in uh, 1908, but of the time, it was kind of writing about its time a bit. So it's not really a historical novel, even though it comes across to us as a historical novel, but 
it was written to be slightly contemporary of the time. So it wouldn't have seemed like a historical novel to the readers that it was first intended for. I think it also demonstrates like a lot of changes in the way that women were viewed. She does some things that like women of the time struggled to do almost suffragist imagery maybe not necessarily in this book but in the series i guess i'm talking about this is a whole entire series by the way in case you didn't know it is just the first in a series this one is mainly mainly focusing on her early years with the cuthberts and she learns the value of hard work and she learns what it means to be part of a family and she learns a lot about friendship it's also a digital book club selection, which means that you can have an entire book club worth of people, like as many people as you want, reading the book at the same time digitally through Libby. And I will put a link and QR code and several other things in a guide that goes in this book so that you can find that book easily. You can all discuss it together. You could create a book club around it. I think that that this would be a like, perfect one for this time of year too. It's like, it's got very homey and like family themes, uh, which is partially the reason why I picked it. It is one of our books in the YA collection. It is also in our children's collection because it kind of crosses that, like she starts out as a young girl uh, and it kind of bridges that transitional gap between childhood and being a teenager. Anyway, hope you give it a chance.